Brooklyn Hip Hop Festival has been happening since 2005 and is New York City's largest hip hop cultural event. Now, the four day event showcases hip hop's legacy as an agent of artistic advancement, community building, and social change, not to mention a little entertainment. Music panel discussions, dance, films, there's something to satisfy everyone who's part of hip hop culture, from the DJ to the sneakerhead. And the events will be held at Mega Evers College and St. Anne's Warehouse, culminating in the flagship main stage concert at Brooklyn Bridge Park. And to tell us who will be performing at the big finale and everything else happening from June 13th, I'm sorry, July, you missed it, from July 13th <laughs> to July 16th, here is Brooklyn Hip Hop Festival founder and executive director, Mr. Wes Jackson. Welcome back to BKO. Officer. What's up, boss? Good to see you. Good to see you at the table again. And joining him is the creator of the popular and self-funded, not to mention, web series, Money and Violence, Moses Verno. Thank you for joining us Thank you today. for having me. Got to have both of you gentlemen at the table. No so the hip hop festival is the point of entry here. So tell us what we can expect and why it's still relevant after all these years. Well, and, and speaking to relevance, I think it's becoming even more relevant as hip hop grows and expands uh, its power to different areas of discipline, whether it be film or music or education. So um, I'm, we're really excited about this year because we're going back to this four day format, so each day we're sort of highlighting a different discipline. Okay. The first day, uh, the Hip Hop Institute at Medgar Evers, we're going to be having conversations about the state of hip hop journalism, uh, independence, and the resurging independent movement in hip hop, knowledge, education, lectures, panels. The second day, on the 14th, we're going to be back at, at Medgar Evers right. for the Dummy Clap Film Festival, where, where Mo's going to be in there talking about um, hip hop as expressed through film and TV. Then we have the Juice Hip Hop exhibition, which is for burgeoning artists, mm -hmm. dance, sneakers, you were talking about. And then we have the finale concert that Saturday with Nas, Fab, Quali, Rhapsody. So yeah, we see the names. We're a little bit of everything. That's a lot right. of Brooklyn boys coming home to get on the big stage. Indeed, indeed. And That's Uncle nice. Ralph is in the house. He's hosting this year. Well, Ra yeah, Ralph has been our host for the last 11 years. So yeah. that's 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 the big host. That's the OG right there. Very cool. So I'm looking at the Dummy Clap Film Festival on July 14th from uh, 12 to 7. And so you guys are an integral part of that. Yes, we are, and we're uh, proud to be. Good. So I'm looking at both of you who've created your own lane, independently moving forward, film and video, and using different means of production and distribution that a lot of people haven't taken advantage of to the level of success that you have. So, Mo, I'm going to ask you about your series and how you guys just put on, and about season two's finale, <laughs> where you left us. <laughs> but just in getting the series started, how did you come to use hip hop and hip hop culture in your own way that's not commercial from the studios down? Well, you know, it's kind of crazy because um, that's what kind of uh, fueled us to do the entire project, was just I just sat back and um, thought about every urban drama or urban film mm -hmm. that I've seen uh, growing up, and I just felt that we've never really been depicted authentically. Yeah. You know, so I wanted to put a project out there that uh, depicted us the way that we truly are. I remember when we first started shooting our first couple of episodes, and some of my actors would ask, like, why do we have to speak so intelligently? And I'm like, because we're not all idiots. Right. You know, um, to navigate through this urban jungle, you have to be intelligent, mm -hmm. especially to survive, especially with all these pitfalls that's, that, 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 that's in our areas. And I just wanted to depict us more true to form, and I think that there's an importance of a black narrative being told by a black voice without any other interference, because who knows us better than we know ourselves? So, looking at both of you guys sitting here now, uh, the New York Times, I think, yesterday had this big story about Chance the Rapper and taking this independent route, how he has been making his mixtapes himself and saying no to all these deals. We're living in an empire world. We got this Made in America festival, like Budweiser wants to mm. sell us something and put it into <laughs> the music. Fox is getting in on showing what it's really like. So, how do you guys maintain your lane and keep the authenticity coming and keep the lights on at the same time? 
Well, it's funny because we were downstairs in the green room talking about this, at Mo, and is you, there's sort of no other option. Right? It's not like we're sitting here like, hmm, do we want to yeah. sell out to this person or not? It's it's so, um, it's coming from our souls what we do. And I, I, I think I can speak for more on this, like, this is a labor of love. This is really a, a there's a, a deep, deep purpose of this to give back to the community, to yeah. be a shining light to the next generation. We're both sort of fathers. So I think the independent spirit is sort of just imbued in us. Yeah. And I think that has been tried to, uh, been edited out of hip-hop maybe over the past 15, 20 years. Right. But now I think we're seeing the cycle turn over again with Chance, with Money Vials, with Brooklyn Hip-Hop Festival. A lot of people saying, nah, man, this, this corporate influence is a bit too much. You're, mm -hmm. you're, you're twisting our story. We're going to get the means of production and distribution, and we're going to tell an accurate portrayal, you know, of this. And I think evidenced by our success and even, you know, Mo's even better, the, the people see it and they're like, they yes, it. that's it. That's the truth. That's yeah. actually, we were talking about mm -hmm. that, like, yo, uh, Chopper. I know a dude like Chopper. <laughs> yeah. Like, he's on my block. Yeah. So it's just real. I think the that's what I would say. The real the real. Yeah, yeah definitely. Um, I, I also, as well, it's all, I mean, I think it's also on what you're driven by. Mm -hmm. You have to understand that um, this project was put together. Uh, it's art because once again it's a depiction of life you right. know um my goal wasn't to become famous my goal wasn't to make money yeah. so i always say that people say money make the world go round but the truth is that isn't true people's dream dreams do it just so happens we acquire money in the process of reaching our dreams right. you understand so my goal you know it's great that the deals came but when i sit at that conference table my original plan, course of action, was to do this on my own if I had to. Mm -hmm. So, great that you came, but if this isn't uni mutually beneficial to the both of us, yeah. I'm not giving up any creative control, because at the end of the day, then I, it would lose its essence, it would lose its vision. So, like he said, that's not even something to think about. It's not compromisable. So, looking at this and at the state of hip-hop now, where is Brooklyn's point of entry? Because you got three headliners who are on the stage for the big finale concert, yeah. and two of them are very local, and the other guy, we'll bring him in for a <laughs> But looking at Brooklyn and all of that influence that's out there, where are we in terms of the hip-hop? I know that it's like the East Coast, West Coast thing is not a thing, but right. how much of hip-hop culture right now does have a Brooklyn flavor to it? I mean, I think it's, I, I think it's the energy is still here, right? We have issues of gentrification, which I'm sure yeah. you've talked about in here, that are looking to sort of squeeze it out. But um, I think the energy is here. We have such a rich community of, you know, this immigrant community, these sort of, you know, people from the South and people moving in. The entrepreneurs, the spirit, the people willing to take risks are still here mm -hmm. um, in Brooklyn. And they're not—it's never going to really leave. Yeah. Because now, maybe 20 years ago, the studios of the system could have pushed Mo out or they yeah. could have bought me out. But now we kind of know— we know the game. We're not going to be so easily removed anymore. So right. I think, you know, with Cloud9, what they're doing there, Brooklyn Bodega, we're establishing this sort of beachhead to make sure that, you know, it, it's here and it will remain here. So at the festival, there is, like, literally something for everyone. Like we said, whether you are in the sneakers or if you want to come to the conference, if you were the guy who was in the back of the class writing <laughs> lyrics during school, or if you're just a hip-hop head, there's going to be something there for you. I wonder from you, Mo, is there any area of the art or culture that hip-hop hasn't touched? Hmm. You know what? That's a good one. Honestly, like, it seems I can't like say really that they're— spreading I, across I can't, everything. All you have to do is, I mean, look around. I mean, everything from TV to commercials to, I mean, architecture. You know, we have the—what's uh, the other uh, biggie building over there on Fulton that says, uh, spread oh, love, it's the oh, Brooklyn way? Yeah, yeah, right on the corner. Yeah, right by Habana. Like, yeah. hip-hop has been such a— big influence mm -hmm. that um it's multi-generational now like it's it's seeped into who we've become right. as a people so although you may not see it consciously it's their subconscious yeah 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 <laughs> you yeah. understand um so i really don't think there isn't anything that hip-hop hasn't touched man like yeah. 
It's the world we live in. It's, yeah, it's become a ballet choreographer from the Brooklyn Ballet sit here yesterday, who is a woman of a certain age, and she was talking about how she always has them warm up to run DMC, and they do their ballet <laughs> no and go through. And I was like, okay, we've reached the tipping point. Right. So, <laughs> so what surprises can you reveal? There's just three of us here. Is there anything? See, absolutely not. Spoilers. I need the spoiler. Exactly. Listen, no, you, you was asking me for spoilers. Exactly. 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 This, this is a man. We want spoilers. This is all a warm up. To oh. Get to you. All to I know is we was downstairs. I think I pulled a little something that's got my it's, it's like about I said, somebody it's who just didn't the three die. of us, because it's always like you're on the train and there's a guy next to you watching, and you're like, put that away. <laughs> exactly. I, I haven't gotten to you yet. So well, season three, opening scene. Where are we? Miz and Ray. Right. Where are we? Walk out the car. Ti has <laughs> gone. has <laughs> gone home. Where are we? Exactly. <laughs> No, he won't. He won't give a minute. We, I will say for this, we are working on, you know, shout to Nas' team and Fab's team and quality. Everybody's really excited, mm -hmm. uh, from Nas all the way down to, you know, um, you know, Mick Grant, bringing up, making this, want to make his best festival. Weekend. All right, July thirteenth through sixteenth, we're out. Boom, boom.